Hi everyone, welcome back. We are at the Flink Forward User Conference sponsored by Data Artisans, the creators of Flink. We're here at the Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco. Uh, we're on the ground and we're with Tom Kachuk, who is Senior Consulting Engineer at Dell EMC. And, yes. Uh, you had a fairly exciting announcement to make this morning. Why don't you give us a little background on that? Yes, so we're announcing uh, Pervega, which is a new open source product that uh, Dell's been working on for the last year. And it's, uh, we're, we're opening the floodgates on uh, uh, May 10th, and it's going to act as a streaming storage system. Okay, so um, help us square a couple circles. So um, we all we all learned over the last couple of years as Kafka, you know, took off and sort of swept uh, s swept large and small enterprises alike, or large and medium sized enterprises alike, by storm. Um, that rethought the the way to communicate um, data between applications mm -hmm. and um, but as you were telling me it still makes assumptions about conventional hardware that it runs on that might be perhaps suboptimal um, yeah so, so I, I think the difference between what we're doing and what what uh, Kafka is is just fundamentally comes down to the model Kafka is a is a messaging system and it's and its model is built around messages uh, ours is a streaming system and we operate fundamentally as a stream. So when a, when a client sends bytes over the wire, uh, the server does not interpret them at all. It is, it is opaque. It is, it, is a, it is analogous to a Unix pipe or, or an HTTP socket. Uh, it, what goes over isn't interpreted, and that gives us um, the ability to, to sort of channel that data in. We, we ended up piping it into uh, a, a long-term archival system, um, which gives us advantages in terms of storage. So where in where in a system that's like Kafka, where you, where you need performance and you need you need to get high throughput, you're going to basically run um, on machines that are built for for, for, for IOPS. They're built for capacity uh, to to get data in and get data out, and that that works and it's fast. Uh, but what it what it isn't give you is it doesn't give you cheap long term storage. So usually what people do is they have a separate a separate system for cheap long term storage that's usually something like HDFS. So you end up running a Kafka job that reads out of your Kafka uh, uh, topic and ends up writing to HDFS. So what, we, what we're doing is building a streaming system that is directly taking the stream that's coming in from the user and uh, uh, holding it locally and giving you the ability to, to, to stream off of it and the ability to connect to it and listen to it in real time and giving you strong consistency. But at the same time, the ultimate place where this is stored durably is in your long-term storage. It's in your HDFS. And the advantage of that is that your storage becomes uh, cheap, dense storage that you're that you're used to configuring for HDFS, and so you can configure uh, very long-term uh, storage. So you, you can use the same interface to back up and go to last year uh, and, and stream forward. And the advantage of that is that you don't end up in what I refer to as this sort of accidental lambda architecture, where you 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 know build something like a Flink cluster, and you say, oh well, this is great, and it connects to the streaming component for Kafka, and you know we can stream data and we get real time analytics and we and we can do all this nice stuff. But then if we have a bug in our code and we need to go back, you actually need to flip to a different connector and deploy a different job to refill back a backfill from a different storage system. So we're ending to to, to solve that that problem. Okay, so um, let me make like uh, let's um. Let's frame that so that a customer today would have, a mainstream customer who's been working with Hadoop would have their data lake, which HDFS, sure. and their, you know, their data, which is sort of the big, sort of old archive. Yes. Almost. And then they would be using perhaps Kafka e either to ingest data, an additional data into the data lake, or uh, perhaps um, extracting it for uh, an application that wants to process it with, you know, continuous processing or low latency, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Now, your solution comes where you want an emphasis on speed and scale, um, and you're not reformatting the data essentially to hit the disk in a um, 
in a format that's understandable by the file system, your data is trying to move along in the format of memory, if, yes. I, if I'm understanding correctly. So there's a lot less translation going on, and you use, um, uh, pe partly because of that, and partly because you have, I, I would, I'm understanding higher capacity storage, um, you don't have to spill to disk and exercise all that I.O. that you would get from expensive disks. Right. So, HDFS, big data, um, the Dell EMC solution, much faster data mm -hmm. than um, Kafka. And then, so that makes it a good citizen in a, in a world where you want to build more and more continuous applications where latency, every last bit of latency is the enemy. Yes, yes. So, so our goal is to get uh, very low append latency, and that's important because we can't, like right now, you, you can't reasonably do something even analogous to streaming off of HDFS because the write latency is just too high. You end up calling write with, with, uh, uh, with a small bit of data and you're talking 100 plus milliseconds, and uh, then you need to go turn around and read, and your read performance will be very low if, if you do lots of tiny appends. So what we give you is a system that lets you do lots of tiny appends very fast, very low latency, but at the same time, the data is ultimately being stored in HDFS. So you still get the nice bulk storage capacity of HDFS, but without incurring the penalty of all those tiny appends. And uh, just to be clear, those, those tiny appends, it's like your system is absorbing whatever volume or velocity that's thrown at it, yes. so it handles the back pressure. And then, um, rather than HDFS sort of backing things up because of its high latency write path, mm -hmm. you're absorbing all that because you're not very resource intensive, being optimized for speed and capacity and then you can put it back into the long-term store, HDFS. Yes, we, we, we can aggregate all these tiny writes into, into one or two big writes and, okay. and put them in. Yeah. So, so tell us some of the use cases that you're working on with you know, design partners or... Um, right, uh, so the big one we're working on with Data Artisans is we want to get uh, exactly one semantics in, in, a, in, a, in Flink jobs that are... Um, that are uh, derive from one another. So, for example, if you have a job and it takes in, um, say, an order or something, and it processes it and it generates some derivative data, today, if you want to have exactly one semantic on a job that's running on that derivative data, it has to be co-located and run with the first job. And that's problematic for a number of reasons. Uh, main, namely because in a lot of companies you don't want to have some secondary job impact the, the, the primary one. So you want something in between that can, that can op operate as a buffer there. But right now there's no way to do that, that with uh, a, a streaming pipeline without giving up exactly one semantics. And exactly one semantics is a really big deal for a lot of, a lot of Flink applications. And so what we can let you, let you do is have one Flink job that runs, um, produces some output, and then goes into Pervega and as a sync, and then that Pervega turns around and is a source for another Flink job. And you can still have exactly one semantics end to end. Okay, so um, it sounds like just the way Kafka was sort of the source um, and sync um, consumer producer um, through a hub, but once it was handed off to another system, it lost that uh, exactly once guarantee. Yes. And as we said, wasn't optimized for necessarily for throughput and capacity. Um, um, so that's how you guys solved that problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if you were to pick some common applications that have been, you know, attacked by or, or served by Kafka and um, and Flink. The, which ones? Where there are there certain characteristics that would be, you know, most amenable to the Dell EMC solution? Uh, anything that requires strong consistency. So, so the, the so the, the real difference that we have is is that we have a strong consistent application. So. It, we don't just have this this one API that, that that's dealing with events and so on. Uh, we, we actually have uh, this this low level primitive, and we're building a lot of different APIs on top of it. Um, so let me give you an example. Uh, we have an API that lets you have uh, we call a state synchronizer, and what that is is uh, an object that you can hold in memory, uh, 
uh, in, across a number of machines, and you can perform updates on that object. But it's guaranteed that every uh, every process that's performing an update is performing an update on the on the latest version of that object. So that object is coordinated across a fleet, and everyone sees the same same sequence of of, of updates and it sees the same object uh, at any given time. And that's that's a real advantage for anywhere where you're trying to do something with, that requires strong consistency. So you can do those sorts of applications, and you can also do things that require um, transactional semantics. So one thing that we allow is when you write data to to uh, our output, you can do it transactionally. So you can have one pervega stream. Uh, and coordinate a transaction that potentially across different uh, different areas of sort of key space that would end up actually on multiple Pervega hosts and have that uh, with tra atomic uh, consistency where you call commit and all of them and all of the writes across all of them go in uh, simultaneously and that's uh, that's a big deal for a lot of applications and you can sort of combine these two primitives where you have a state object and you have a uh, a uh, transaction object to interlink transactionality with that of an external system. So you could, for example, say, I have a, a, a Flink sync that's going to have a couple of different outputs, uh, but one of them is, say, a, uh, a SQL data, database. right? And then you could say, I want this output to go to Pervega if and only if my transaction to SQL commits. Oh, it sounds like you get uh, as freebie uh, yeah. distributed mm -hmm. sort of transactions. Yes. Um, that's very, very interesting because that's something. That's like a. That's a handoff that you would get. A, you know, you would expect from a single vendor solution. Mm -hmm. um, very, very impressive. All right, Tom. On that, on that note, we're going to have to uh, cut it off uh, because we are uh, ending our coverage at uh, Flink Forward, um, the Data Artisans User Conference, the first one held in the U.S. And we are at the Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco. I'm George Gilbert, and we're signing off for this afternoon. Thanks for watching.